in physics, all quantities, anything that we measure or report, anything that has a number associated with it, is going to be one of two types. And the two types are called vectors and scalars. So a scalar is the more simple type. Um, a scalar is anything that we just describe as an amount. Okay, so most measurements that we make are just an amount. You want to know um, what is the amount, you report an amount, and that's, that's it. Um, some quantities, though, are called vectors. And vectors have both an amount and a direction. Okay, so I think the easiest way to um, think about this is that vectors are quantities that you would want to draw with an arrow. If you could um, associate an arrow with a quantity, it's probably a vector. So a lot of motion related things are going to be vectors. Um, if an arrow doesn't make any sense, then it's probably a scalar. Okay, so let's look at some specific examples. Um, so some scalars that are things that you would experience in your everyday life, um, for instance, our mass. So you might have a measurement that's 32 kilograms. If you have a rock that weighs 32 kilograms, that's a scalar. There's no direction associated with it. Um, you could also say, all right, this room is four meters wide. That's um, a scalar. It's just a distance. There's no direction associated with it. Um, or you can measure a temperature, maybe negative 17 degrees Celsius. It's okay for it to be positive, negative, or zero. That doesn't affect whether it's a scalar or not, but it's just a number. It wouldn't make any sense to say 17 degrees Celsius south. That doesn't make any sense. But negative 17 degrees Celsius, that makes perfect sense. Um, and another one is just um, time intervals, so like 29 seconds. That is another scalar. We wouldn't say 29 seconds to the left or something like that. It's just 29 seconds. Now for vectors, as I said, a lot of motion um, variables are going to be vectors. So for instance, we had a displacement. So I could say something like four meters north, and that is a vector. Um, or I could say that we have three pounds pushing down. Okay, down is a direction, so this is a vector. Um, another one is um, a velocity. So for instance, I could say that a car was traveling 25 meters per second east, and that is now a vector. If I just said 25 meters per second, then it's uh, a scalar. If I say 25 meters per second east, then it's a vector. Okay, so let's look at the um, kinematic quantities that we talked about in the last video and decide if they're vectors or scalars. So the first one we had was position. And position, um, and this may be a little bit confusing, position is a vector. Okay, the variable that we use to represent position um, is sometimes x with a little arrow over it. Um, I like to do a little harpoon style arrow, so it only has the little hook on top. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing a like, sort of normal style arrow like this. That's perfectly fine. I think the um, sort of hook style is a little faster to write. Um, another common variable is r, so we sometimes use r for a position vector. Why does it make sense to think of a position with an arrow? Well, if I imagine that I have some sort of coordinate system, these could be like latitude, longitude lines or something like that. Well, I can just like draw an arrow from the origin to wherever you are located. And you've got a ur here sign like this, and that arrow is representing your location. So um, that's a way that you can think about why a position would be a vector, even though it might not seem like it at first. Um, another one that we talked about is displacement. Okay, um, and displacement is also a vector. And a displacement is a difference between two positions. So for instance, if you go from some position to some other position, you started here and ended here, then that arrow that goes from where you started to where you ended, that's your displacement. The variable that we use for that is delta x, or delta r. And because it's a vector, we put a little arrow over the variable. Okay. Um, distance is actually just a scalar. So if I wanted to know how far you went, then I would just um, take the displacement that we calculated and find its magnitude. So we can do that with absolute value bars. Um, that tells us that we're just interested in the size of the displacement, not the direction as well. Um, and then the last one we talked about briefly was path length, um, which is a scalar. And this one doesn't really have a standard variable. Um, sometimes we use S, sometimes we use L, um, sometimes we use D. It really just kind of depends on whatever is convenient. Um, in calculus-based courses, we typically try not to use D because we use Ds for calculus, but um, you will see probably all of these in the course of this class. Um, time is a scalar, of course. Um, there's no direction associated with it. And the variable we use for time is typically a lowercase t. Um, occasionally we might use something else, but that's pretty common. Um, and then for a time interval, we use delta t. Okay. So again, a difference between two times. Hopefully that is not a particularly confusing um, notation. Now, essentially every quantity that you'll learn about in physics is going to be a vector or a scalar. So anytime you come across a new thing that you haven't heard of before or that you have heard of, but you're only learning about um, in physics for the first time, you should always try to figure out if it's a vector or a scalar before you try to do anything with it. Um, now that said, there are a small number of more interesting and more complicated structures that exist in physics, um, but you will not really see any of those um, in the 121 through 123 sequence, so you don't have to worry about them. Um, 
if you go on in Nature and Physics and um, start coming across some of these more complicated structures, I give you permission to look back and curse my rotten name for telling you that everything's going to be a vector or a scalar. But what is true is that almost everything is a vector or a scalar. And um, whenever you come across something that's not, people will always make a point to let you know how to think about it instead. Okay, so um, yeah, that's, that's how to think about quantities for now. Does it have a direction or does it not have a direction?